but I'm guessing it's still enough to see this fellow over here. You just bit to see the the skeleton standing over there. Yeah. Uh, uh run will turn back. Uh well, we do have something uh, across the way over there as he points across the uh, pit there. Hmm. Yeah. What should we do? Wait, were we all following? Don't know, were you? I don't know, there's still three of us over here. It's with the party or not? Probably not. I'm treating it as your characters are where your tokens are standing. I just saw that only a couple left, and I was like, oh. Okay. I'll make my way stealthily. Make my way! Make my way! <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, um, uh, um, so, uh, so, what do we want to do? Um, we, there's a stairwell, he points over to this stairwell right here, uh, down, and, uh, there seems to be a, uh, a hallway that keeps going, um, don't know where it goes to. Well, um, first, just in case, um, he's going to take turns with the three that are closest to her and cast Sword on all of them. So, Torin, Dovit, and Don all get Death Ward. that this could come in handy and by the way any spells that she casts through touch she boops the person on the nose <laughs> flinch every time <laughs> mm. all right well let's see d d has anybody else here a uh, childlike voice or is it just me Mm. Do I? Let me get a little closer to see if I can hear. Okay. Run will turn and look at him uh, with his eldritch sight on. Would he see... Uh, him with any undead magic about him? No. Grizz? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> All right, no. so... Uh, Run will kind of perk up his uh, little gnomish ears, see if he could hear any childlike laughter. Nope. You don't hear much of anything like that. Uh, you do hear the, the sounds of occasional shuffling echoing from down below. Uh, uh no. Uh, no... Laughter here. Um, I've I've sometimes heard of little kids' voice in the past, but not all the time. 
Hmm, okay. I don't hear it right now, though. Okay. What did it say? Well, it was asking, asking if I was lost? Okay. Yeah, this time it's asking uh, why I'm in this dungeon. So I will go ahead and respond that we are seeking a way out and ask if it can help. Kind of weirded out, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hoping I'm not going crazy. <laughs> okay. Hopefully I'm not going crazy, but it said that it doesn't know how to get out, but if we can find it and help it, let's see it, how to get out, but it would try to help us if we could find it. Well, hmm. Can I insight check something I can't hear? <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's not leading us to a <coughs> <laughs> you can't, and sadly, it's anything you can't hear. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, well, my only question is, why is it that you're the only one that can hear it? My thoughts exactly. I'm, that's why I'm kind of hoping I'm not going crazy. <laughs> you see Run kind of is uh, one of his bushy <clears throat> eyebrows. <laughs> And kind of shrugs and sighs. Well, I I think this dungeon might just drive us to that point. Imagine that. <laughs> Me actually being more insane than I am. <laughs> he kind of looks over to Torin to see if he get he gets a reaction. Just fucking stone faced. <laughs> Run just sighs. Ah, Stereo well. will whisper to Run, he's grumpy. He just lost his girlfriend. I understand why he's grumpy, but he's grumpy. Well, let's just not cross him. I've seen him do things that would make the Hairs on your nipple stand. Don't know if I have hairy nipples. <laughs> You're a satyr. No, even it's, if you it's don't. Likely. <laughs> Hair doesn't extend up to her chest. It stops at her waist. <laughs> but I figured, like, no, no, no. What I mean by hairy nipples, not like you know the long, disgusting hairs that are that are ugly and feel weird, and you pull up them. No, no, I'm talking about, like, the soft, down, downy type of hair that you find on a satyr. Yeah, some, like, pictures I've seen of satyrs, some of them don't have the hair all the way up, so, like, I'm just imagining her stops at her waist, because, like, it's weird to have a hairy-chested chick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining Phil. <laughs> Female satyr! <laughs> <laughs> Different. <laughs> well, y you know, uh, consider. Let's consider the possibilities here. Where would their, uh, uh, well, teeth be? I mean, on a uh, goat, it would be down on between a, their on legs. A satyr, it's, it's established on the chest, so <laughs> we've seen pictures of the satyrs. Okay. They're well, still okay. in the same place that they should be, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing a crop top. She's not indecent to be yeah. showing her nipples on now, her stomach. Now, I've got a question about a Minotaur, and you might have a different answer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, so, you, uh, anyways, you, you see, uh, you see a small little rift open up and uh you 
see pop out a small little bat. And it just kind of... Sits on runs. Uh, Uh, shoulder and starts chirping at him. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, hey. yeah. Hey, Grizz, uh, did nothing happen to your stream? My girlfriend said it says your, the stream has ended. Uh, it flickered on and off, apparently, according to the thing. It should still be okay, because it's not listed as end stream on my... Uh, it still shows the option to end stream on my side, and it popped up again on my, uh... uh on my streaming thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was just asking because she so said on I, her I end. Think, I think it stuttered. So that's okay. I, I always hate it when that happens. Okay, uh, my... There we go. Okay. My bet was hidden beneath me. All right, uh, well, I can, uh... In. So, uh, which direction do we want to go in? Hmm. I haven't been down the stairs. So I'm not entirely sure what's there. Um, no, I've been all over the rest of the first floor. We did hear movement down below. You say you saw something disappear down there last time, little one? Uh, I... I saw something. I can't remember exactly what I saw. Uh, um, I could send uh, Floof down if someone's willing to carry me on their uh, uh, back. Hop on, little one. All right, and uh, he's going to... Climb up onto Dovid's back and send Floof down while he goes into uh, a master familiar trance. So, uh, Ah, so what, what would, uh, Floof see down on the next level there? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm flipping to. Uh, so okay. it's actually a rather long grand staircase and Floof descends low and low till finally reaching the bottom. And at the bottom of such a grand staircase is a resonant mechanical rumbling that emanates from a dark shaft opening up in the middle of the chamber. Four cylindrical stone pedestals surround the shaft, each ten feet tall, five feet wide, and featuring a tiny slot in its side. Squatting atop each pedestal is a large, four-armed gargoyle. All right, so with... With that information, I will call Floof back and relay and the information. From, see, to... from seeing up above as you fly up, you notice that each gargoyle is contained within a square made of metallic tiles embedded in the top of its pedestal. Starting with the northmost pedestal and going clockwise, the tiles are copper, silver, gold, and platinum. Oh. No. Oh. What was that again? Copper? Copper, silver, gold, and platinum. Okay. Silver and platinum <laughs> across from each other, and gold and copper across from each other. Hmm. Like our currencies, correct? What's that? Like our currencies, correct? Uh, well, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, 
So, uh, copper, silver, golden, platinum. Yeah. Uh, not sure of what the full thing is. Now, uh, <laughs> what what uh, does come to mind, though, is uh, the uh, mechanical workings down there. Um, kind of reminds me of uh, the room that I saw when we were the first time we came through here. Um, the one that scared you? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I uh, remember that room. Uh, there were um, chains all over the place. Uh, now, I'm not sure if it had anything to do with uh, this here, but... Uh, Uh, now, Grizz, just to refresh my memory, it did have a, like, a mechanical workings area in it, right? That one room? Yes. Or, okay. That's what you remember seeing before you ran back up the stairs upon seeing what was in, else was in the room. Yes. So, with, uh, runs mechanical knowledge that's what he's going off of is that that room might have something to do with this shaft hmm okay uh, now um as far as so there is, uh, we got uh, four gargoyles with four arms each. Um, and that shaft, uh, it must be a, like a, 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 like a lift of some sort. By the sounds of it, um, I could always send Floof down it, but uh, after he gets so far away, I wouldn't be able to exactly see what he sees. Mm, I gotcha. Should we go down and investigate further? Uh, uh, well, uh, that's uh, up to everyone else. We can. Little one, I had a little, I had been thinking about something since our adventure earlier, if I may. Uh -huh. the, the magnet room. You said that that thing was attached to the thing. Uh, uh oh, the uh, shield. Yeah, uh, uh, attached to a uh, statue. I wonder if I were to give you all of my metal to hold on to, and I want to use my uh, acid breath on there. If it, if I could get the shield and uh, run, go down those stairs into that room you're afraid of with that magnet shield. Run kind of tilts his head and um, I want to say I want to do an intelligence check for calculations to see if give me an arcana check actually for that considering it deals with a spell before you roll okay. can I give him a bardic inspiration um, go for it well, okay. Quick question before I roll. Spell or magical item? It's magical item, so arcana check. You get magical a D8. Item. Well, since it's a magical item, run is a gnome, a rock gnome, so he can use his uh, history check actually for it which he gets that uh double proficiency in oh well then you don't even need a bark inspiration um so that's a let's see so history uh so that's an eight nine ten seven twelve so that's 
a 25 for that check. Was I muted or did I give the explanation? Hello? Uh Am I muted? I didn't uh, hear I anything yeah. you said. Okay. Yeah, uh, nothing so, came through. All right. So, uh, yeah, I said something several times. Uh, <laughs> so, basically, you would be aware that the statue and the shield are actually part of the same enchantment that it would be impossible to separate them and keep the enchantment, that if you did separate the shield and the statue, it would simply destroy the enchantment. Okay, and so I will relay this to uh, Dovid and... I see. Well, it was it was a thought. Uh, yeah, it would uh, it would probably have been a interesting idea. For sure. I don't carry much mental on me anyway, so that's why I was considering that. Ah, uh, well. Say la vie. Bless you. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, sorry. That was, uh, Sylvan for, uh, Oh well. <laughs> oh, I see. This beautiful bastard. Oh, and the funny, uh, actually, does he actually? Uh, no, he does not. Okay. Just. Okay, uh, so, uh, which direction do we want to go? Everybody feel about left. I think we have a 50-50 chance no matter which way we go. True. And Run will turn around and... Uh, well, uh, we also have to worry about that little critter over on the other side there, spotting us. It, it ran away from us the last time. True. All right, well, uh, I will send Floof down the hall a little ways and to... See what he will see. Uh, I guess, is there a way for me to switch between my vision to Floof's vision? I'm sorry, what did you say? I said, is there a way to switch between my vision and Floof's vision? Uh, yeah, that's what you're already doing. I meant uh, roll uh, twenty wise. Uh, no, because there's no easy way of dealing with that right now without moving all of you. Okay, so what I will do is, I will send my character down the hall, but say it's Floofs. That way, I can at least get the dynamic lighting there. Okay, right, now that's different, because so... you were talking about go... No, 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 move your token back. Y we were talking about two completely different things. Uh, you uh, you were asking about going down below, not t going down the hall. And actually, this time I was talking about going down the hall, because uh, they yeah. were talking about going left. 
Yeah, but that's why I was asking you what where, where you were going, and you're talking about the, v the vision down below, and it's like that wouldn't make any difference because of the fact that you, I'm not mo twitching maps. <laughs> I'm just I'm just describing <laughs> using theater of the mind for that. Oh, I'll uh, um. You should be able to see from the bat. Yes, I can see it now. Thank you. So. And uh, whatever I, whatever. Okay, so I will roll perception check using the bat stat. Mm -hmm. Give me just a second here. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so. Um, getting so perception is a plus one, which they which bats get advantage on with keen senses. So that would be a 14 perception as blue flies down the hallway. Yeah, Fluke doesn't see anything interesting. Alright, and so but he does fly around the thing and then comes to here. Uh, I do need to see how far that is. Okay, so that's 60 there. That's 50. Uh, I think I, um, I don't know if it has the I'm familiar. Here's while you're familiar within a hundred feet of you. You can communicate telepathically. Okay, so right about there is the max of my telepathic link to him. All right. Unless it goes through walls, which then it would be a different story. That's her max, yeah. Okay. So it's fading. Alright, so... What are the rest of you guys doing when he's doing this? Well, I'm carrying right on my back. Okay. Terry is just fascinated by what's happening. Like she can see runs in just like a weird state, and that a I mean, bat just appeared Asteria out of nowhere. Knows where, where everything is in this on this level, so it's like okay. <laughs> Pretty much just at but, the ready, yeah, waiting for. It, it, it's like, poops. never mind. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I will have Bluf kind of um hide up in the uh, rafters somewhere, kind of out of sight. There's no rafters. Well, I mean, there's a ceiling there. Yeah, so. but there's no, raft there's no rafters which are easy to perch on, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, uh, well, I mean, we do know that rat, or, uh, the, the flying rats can find They're not some rats. sort of purchase. They're sky <laughs> puppers! Uh, technically, they are still rodents. No, they're not. That's why I'm <laughs> complaining about people still calling them that. They are not rodents. They don't have ever-growing incisors. They are a very different kind of creature. 
They're oh, closer shit. to they're, they're, they're closer to, to me. They're closer to primates <laughs> than they are to runes. Really? Mm-hmm. My science, science teacher lost me then. <laughs> yeah, I, I've read circles about science teachers before and glared at them in, 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 over time and corrected them. I was that kind of student back in school. Yeah, well, uh, I did graduate high school back in 96, so. 98. Oh, well, not too long after. <laughs> but I also went to a Florida school, so. Ah. Uh. <laughs> There is that. Poor man. I could explain it. (laughs) Anyway. You know more about the crocodilies than the bats. (laughs) Um, Actually, crocodiles would be more native to Louisiana. Yeah, Florida, that's gators. Yeah, that's That's gators. Gators. And pythons are taken over down there because some idiots decided that they didn't want pythons as a pet, released them in there, and they blo- boomed in, in terms of population. Yeah. Isn't that also a thing with iguanas? And uh, in, in, a, in a more recent invasive species, as in the last 20 years, I think, uh, armadillos. Yeah, and can't forget the snakehead. Uh, really? Armadillos in well. Florida? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so armadillos it, are... Uh, I don't think they're uh, native no, to Florida. Arm- yeah, actually, they are native to Florida. I've seen really? them ever since I was a small kid. Well, I think oh. I, I, I thought I thought I'd read that they were also an invasive See, species. See, I went to Florida for they, like they years growing natu- up, and I've never seen an armadillo. They don't there. have any natural enemies in Florida, except for maybe the pythons, which have been introduced. Also, which uh, also don't have natural enemies, but the gators will sometimes get them, and locations. No, actually, gators. armadillo. Actually, armadillos do have. Uh, Natural predators in Florida. They're called uh, coyotes, wolves, mm-hmm. and uh, Florida panthers. Things that yep. well, humans have uh, have cut back the populations of over time, which is the same reason we have deer problems in, in Pittsburgh, well, Pennsylvania in general. Because the things that oh. were supposed to be eating them that were killed off, and humans aren't picking up the slack enough. <laughs> Yeah, don't uh don't get me started on that. Anyway, Sorry. <laughs> so so Floof is hanging out as a bat would, and uh, Run will return. Will um tell will tell the others that well uh, the hall kind of goes down and turns to the left, and it seems to come to another chamber. Um. Can't have Floof go too far, or we will, or I will lose sight of what he sees. Okay, fair enough. So we could either continue; we can go that way, or we can go down, or we can uh, go uh, across, and we'll probably either deal have to deal with our little friend over there, or not. So, with Asteria knowing this first level, she would know that there's no other way down other than this big hole or the waterway, which she's never been down. Yeah, there's just the big hole in the waterway. There there are a couple of other... Yeah, you don't know what, what areas these guys have, have visited yet. But, yeah, you know that there's only the two ways down, as far as you can tell. Well, um, if you guys want to explore the rest of the floor, I mean, we can, but if we're looking for a way down or through this dungeon, um, there's the hole that we're next to, or there's a, back in the room that we slept in, there's a waterway, but I haven't been down that way. Uh we have, and uh, that uh, that actually, uh, well, the way we went uh, all, uh, leads to, uh, we found a room where there was a, uh, a floating skull that kind of took us uh, for a run for our money, and then after that room, uh, the river kind of turns into uh, a uh, waterfall. 
Not oh, exactly yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. I saw the skull in the box, but I kind of stayed out of that room. That kind of creeped me out a little bit. Uh, actually, oh, so, uh... you wouldn't have been able to get into that room. Not, not with the... Oh, okay. Retract what I've just said. I have not seen the skull in the box, and it did not creep me out. <laughs> yep. Well, actually, so you I, might have I seen let... it. Hold on. One second. Uh, you didn't get into that room, but you might have seen it. Hold on one second. Yes, you would You would have seen a view into that chamber uh, through the open jaws of a giant skull, stone skull at the end of a passageway. I'd been like, yeah, I want to stay out of that room. I retract my retraction. I saw the skull. It creeped me out. <laughs> <laughs> I did not go into the room. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, do you remember which way you saw that? Um, across the big hole. Where the, um, this thing is standing. Okay. I think. So, uh, pretty much, you know everything that is uh, on this level? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, what do you know about the end of this hallway? Yeah, what would I know about the end of this hallway? <laughs> I expect... She oh. If you're talking, we cannot hear you. Uh, it's Can't a big map. Please ping where you where you want me to describe. And uh, ping away. Okay. Uh, so you know that past that, past the 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 metal describing thing, which you know some of your party members lost equipment to. Uh, there is a fountain, but the fountain's kind of evil. Uh, so you've avoided that fountain because the water you can't you can't drink the water without bad things happening. Uh, one of your party members, uh, sex got switched on them. Another party member nearly died. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> run, run one some. Run one some of this water. <laughs> a, 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 third, a, a third lost the ability to speak. It, it was not a good fountain. Just out of character? I'm getting some lost vibes here. <laughs> well, unless any of you boys want to grow some titties or possibly die, don't drink from the fountain. <laughs> Good to know. I will okay. avoid that. Run, run. Well, would have, it's not run like the dragon board would have a run. problem with titties, with growing titties. It's, no, they don't grow titties. <laughs> um, actually, run would have at least recognized this room because of the uh, statue where he lost his uh, swords at. Yeah. Okay, so that would have been some information that he run would have uh, relayed as well. Uh, There's well, not um, really much up here besides the bad fountain, the statue that... Um, and there's the area that killed your party, which is up here, I believe. Let's not go back in there. I kind of don't want to see their dead bodies. Little one, should I go destroy the statue with the with this uh, with the seal? Ah, uh, uh, um, you know what? I think we should leave it alone. Okay. For the time being, I will agree with you. I think that's um, a good idea, Run. <laughs> basic, basic, basically, Assyria, you know that there is a mummy up past that way, so if that's the reason why you don't want to deal with it. There's a mummy that way. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> um, so Fair enough. Me? It looks like uh, we are going down. Down, down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, Let's we'll start Run humming will... Fallout Boy. <laughs> Run will come back to his senses. And, uh... No, it puts you on the ground. Here you go with the other one. Ah, uh, ah, uh, thank you. Um, ah, uh, well, uh... Here goes, uh, nothing. 
and run will right, I will roll stealth so needless to say that's a overwhelming pass I'm hoping with a 19 on the dice and a plus 12 to my modifier you feel trying to secure. make sure so he will lead the way. I don't know what the others will roll. Are you guys all going but... go, go, heading down? Yep. All right. Yeah. And I will also stealth along with Chaos Gnome. Okay. We're on. No. I can a... attempt stealth. Can't math. Twenty-three. I will attempt stealth. I'm not good at stealth, but uh. Yeah. Uh, Dove it rolled a 16. Oh, roll your shit. I'm not rolling anything for you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I roll for him, it's a fucking natural one. Try this again. Uh, oh, dear God. Uh, where's my still? There it is. Probably roll it. <laughs> yeah. Some of you are very uh, quiet, we... others of you seem to be making a lot um, of noise, but either way, you don't appear to be attracting any attention, at least not to what you're looking at. Wait, should, uh, should everybody but but uh, the little one be between me and Torin, like formation-wise? You don't even see where Varun is right now, he is that stealthy. <laughs> so shouldn't everybody be between me and Torin, formation-wise? At least that would feel like it would make sense. Up to you guys. Oh snap! Sounds good either way. I did not put since this is not on my uh. I forgot to add this to my roll twenty character. I have what's called Fey Presence because of my warlock. What does that do? Uh, once per short rest, as an action, I can cause each creature within a 10-foot cube from, from me make a wisdom savings throw or become charmed or frightened till the end of my next turn. Are we going to use that right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was actually trying to check on something about a rogue ability that I don't have just yet. Anyways. Um, a stereo will slowly keep up to be in between um, Lovett and Torrin, like he suggested that that's what we're going to do. For a creator who has hooves for feet, she's actually pretty damn quiet. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> At that dexterity, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that stealth be a plus eight. <laughs> nice. A plus nine. I'm Coming for you, Gnome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Oh. So I take it that there's actually another level down to these, uh... Or still some more levels going down to this shaft. Yeah, you can, you can see that there's more stairs going down, down, down. <laughs> I also see that there is... 
two hall passages. One of them seems to be staring back at me. Uh, excuse me, come again? What? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, th uh, this hall here that uh, is to our uh, left, uh, there seems to be a face down at the end of it. And Run will look back around the uh, hall there with his Eldritch Sight going. You see, let me describe the room that you see up there to the left. The walls and floor of this 15-foot square room are cracked and carved with images of a terrified human, uh, of terrified humanoids falling. Set into the middle of the floor is a stone bas relief of a bearded devil face painted green. Forlorn cries echo from the black void of its gaping maw, which you can sort of hear from this distance. Uh, your any extra sight does not appear to to extend quite far to that distance in terms of like be able to detect magic or anything like that. You're a bit too far away. Um, am I? Thirty feet. And you can't use your bat to see through for that. Oh, yeah, not for the Eldridge site, no. Darn. No, uh, that only gives me, uh, blind sight. Ah, uh, okay. So, what would you guys like uh, to do? Well, uh, a, a stone face only makes me, uh, Remember what happened in the dumpster. So I, I really want to avoid something like that happening again. Yeah, let's avoid any more uh, statues like that. Oh, that's that's what killed your friend. Yeah. Oh. Wrong lever and. Orb of annihilation. Yeah, I lost my uh, companion as well. Uh, Delta, on that note, out of character, mm -hmm. aren't you able to re... Or, no, you have to reconstruct it, won't you? I think so. Right, yeah. Grace? You have to. You have to have time to construct. Gotcha. <clears throat> Okay. Probably the materials, which I doubt we're going to find down here. Unless we find a... Yeah, oh. it is a drawback of of a of being a uh, artificer in this sort of environment. Come across yeah. any metal beings, then maybe you can scavenge parts. True, yeah. Isn't there metal on top of that skeleton that was on the other side of that balcony? Uh, there is metal on here. Uh, hold on. Here, 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 and here. I think he's talking about when we were one level up. The uh, the skeleton key. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about like the creepy. Uh, the, that was the skeleton thing. That was on the other side. Uh, well, those things do have metal on them. They were made of bone. So too, but I don't know. Anyways, um, I think what Run will do now is uh, send Floof flying down this hallway here. Just for so okay. Uh, let me roll perception for bats. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Okay, so. 
Oh, okay. So since he's got keen sight, he gets advantage. So that's actually a natural oh. 20 as oh. he flies down this way. Give me one second. I'm reading something. That's fine. Okay. No, 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 I mean, don't move your tokens. I'm I'm reading something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I, I was actually talking about the bat, but, yeah. Oh, oh, well, I could always move the bat back. I mean... Okay, I think I I think I I know what I'm looking at now. Alrighty. You can move the bat back where he was. Okay, back to the corridor. All right. So, at a four-way intersection, the corridors to the north and south curve upward and out of sight, but with no rails or steps to allow them to be climbed. The corpse of a half-human, half-goat creature. Not, not, not all that unlike your friend that you just made. Uh, in robes, sprawls ten feet to the north. It grips a staff tipped with a bronze goat head. Uh, uh, with a vacant, uh, look in his eyes, he turns back and, uh, describes the scene to the group and, uh, asks... Astra, a uh, uh, friend of yours? Daria, um... Doesn't sound familiar. Not one of mine. They all died on the first level. Yeah, Run kind of pats Dovid on the uh, leg and uh, uh, you might need to, uh, give me a hand here. All right, friend. And, uh, so I will kind of lead them towards where Floof is currently. No traps were sighted by Floof, were, were there? No, Floof didn't see anything that would be considered a trap. Okay. So, I will conduct uh, Dovid, and if the rest of the group follows, yep. To, yep. to the corridor here. Uh, uh, run? Run. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. As you start approaching that corridor where your bat is, uh, your uh -huh. bat stays there, uh, you start yeah, noticing to... there is some kind of magical effect along this weird ring in the middle of it. Some kind of transmutation. Something that your bat had no way of seeing or knowing. Uh, um, I would like to roll Arcana. To see if I can identify the spell. All right. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. So, uh, Arcana, uh, that would be a 17. You don't know. Not anything you've ever seen before. Um, would I be able to make an Arcana? Go ahead. 
I was about to ask if I could too, but I'll wait. <laughs> well, uh, part of the thing is, is Run well, has... If you, Run if, has... If you don't have Detect Magic up, you don't see the spell, and mm. its effects are not are not apparent from where you're standing, so... <laughs> okay. The, the, oh. the Arcana checks are not going to... Or not help. Basically, you have to roll really high in order to get, to get any information. But, uh... My three? <laughs> So yeah, you're 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 not certain you're you're you you're not certain what this run person is talking about, because as far as you could tell, there's no magic going on here. I'll uh, try to detect magic. Fortunately, that's not one of the spells that I took this time, because I hardly <sighs> fucking used it last time, and Run already had it. <laughs> I'll attempt detect magic, which will use one of my. Uh, All right. spell slots. Okay, but yeah, no. you can now see that. Yeah, there's some sort of transmutation, tr transmutation, tr transmutation magic, uh, on this ring, in the middle of things, going north to south. Hmm. Okay. Now I'll try a uh, arcana. I, I will call Floof back just to be safe. <laughs> I'll try an arcana check this time. Floof seems to be fine. And see. Only because you have Fluke no is idea. flying currently. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was worth a shot. Ah. Uh, well, um. I guess I could, uh, be a guinea pig. Uh, mm. uh, ca uh, Captain, what do you think? He just kind of snarls. Kind of agree with him. I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> ah, well, uh, there is, um, there's a room going that way, and there is a body to the left there, and, uh, hmm. Uh, you know what? Floof was unfaced by it. So, Run will take to the walls and to the ceiling. Alright. To uh, get closer. Um, how far out does this ring extend? Uh, you can't see from, from where you're standing. It it seems to curve upward on both ends. All right. Run will... Well, I meant the, uh, the transmutation. Same. Uh, thing there. It seems to run the length of it. Ah, uh, okay. So, Run will walk along the uh, walls to get a closer look at this body here. Um, I will, I guess, roll investigation. All right, you're well above the body, so you can't quite reach it, given your stature. Well, he can walk down the hall. Or the, uh, so you're walking back too. down. You're walking down to the floor. Yes, to because uh, uh, if not one to... of the things you'd have noticed is that the spell extends all around the <sighs> walls, the floor, ceiling, all of that. You're you're whatever you're, you are, you're standing on the spell. Oh, okay. See, that's what I was asking. <laughs> yeah, I said it said to north and south. <laughs> it extends the entire ring. All right. So, but uh, run seems unaffected by it. Uh, if it has an effect, you haven't noticed. Okay. Well, I rolled a. Uh, let's see. Investigation is an eight. So twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 
18, 19, 20 on investigation. All right. Uh, you find two books, uh, a pot of ink, uh, and, of course, the staff that the guy is holding. Uh, you've also noticed that, you know, from a distance, when you were looking at him, he just looked like another satyr because he's got horns and, you know, uh, and, you know, hooved feet. But as you're, like, looking closer, you realize that he's got more hair on him than um, your new companion does. And his hands seem to be turning into hooves. She doesn't have hoof hands. She just has hooved feet. There's also a lot of magic coming from that stuff. Uh, run? I know I will regret it, but run does work for an artificer's guild, and his job is to find relics and artifacts to return for research and development. He, he is going to... Oh, okay. So here's the thing. I will need to pull out my D100. All right, because I, I am going to cast Mage Hand. Just pick up the staff. <laughs> <laughs> Just do that. Now the uh, the body is um it, it is sorry the the hand is firmly latched around the staff, meaning that your mage hand uh, is not does not have sufficient enough uh, strength to pull it free. Ah, okay. So, all right. So, I guess Run will have to play tug of war then. Uh, he. So he will want to collect those books as well as the staff. All right. And what about the ink? The, the ink well, it also seems to be magical. Uh, oh yes, uh, all that that uh, basically whatever Run finds there, he's going to snatch up. Roll a wisdom saving throw. You're cursed. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the inkwell and the two in the two books and you're trying to get the staff yes okay uh do i need to roll something for no you talk about the staff for a bit and manage to manage to pull it free okay so once he's collected all that run will return to the party you notice anything Funky, like anything changed about Run? No, he seems to be fine. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it was not a satyr, but um, I, I believe that uh, there was a. In my best guess, uh, guesstimation, uh, there may have been a polymorph that was used here because uh the what i thought was a satyr uh did not seem to be a satyr but seemed to be changed had been in the midst of uh changing into another creature hmm interesting how and, do uh, you mean uh well uh his hands were uh hooves but I, uh, being the, a satyr, know of any satyrs that have hooves for hands? Uh, no, you do not. That's rather unusual. And uh, I did find this. Uh, now, what kind of magic do I see coming off the staff, though? Uh, some kind of, of magic. Some kind of destruction magic, I think, is what it would be called. Destruction magic. Well, I know what spells on it. It doesn't list the school of magic next to it. I just know what spell it, it, it is. Ah, okay. 
Uh, so my guess is destruction a, magic. Or, yeah, you know, usually that would be like a conjuration. Yeah, probably conjuration then. Either conjuration or abjuration. Uh, and no, none of you else would no notice any type of effect as Run walks. It, as far as you, you can tell, it's perfectly safe. Uh, well, uh, would we want to go investigate the room that behind us? Mm. Let me look for I, I can't think of any. I can't think of a better idea. <clears throat> can I use identify on any of the items that you have that Run has found? That's up to Run. Hey, if you uh, are you asking Run that? Um, yeah, Run. Would, would it be okay to try to identify any of the spells? Maybe like the staff, by chance. Uh, I, and he holds out the staff. Uh, go right ahead. And uh, while you're at it, maybe you, uh, if you have time, you could uh, probably cast identify on this. Uh, transmutation that uh, I've been walking all through and just to be sure what it is. So reminder for the newer players, if you are a ritual caster, you don't have to use a spell slot to cast identify. But it takes ten correct. it takes eleven minutes to do so, which means things could easily walk up on you during that time. This is true. True, that is true. Spell slots or possibility of something walking up on us. <laughs> what is everybody's vote on that? Should I use a spell slot or or just take the time to identify? If you want to use the time to identify. If you want to take the time, I'd say you should get in between everyone and let us uh, kind of uh, be surround you. That way you have the time and the protection if something were to walk up on us. Me, myself, uh, I would say use spell slot on the uh, circle here. Okay. But use ritual on the um, staff. staff. On the staff. Okay. I'll use ritual on the staff. And, well, first I'll do the, the, uh, the one area over here. I'll use a spell slot, so that's gonna drop me down one. What are you trying to? And to what are you trying to identify first? The transmutation circle. Um, I don't I do think that? you can actually identify something like that. No. Uh, actually, uh, is it a magic item? It's not sort considered of. an item. No. Okay, then I won't do that then. Okay, because right. if it's an item or if it's even a person that is affected by a spell, but I guess not an area, so uh, that would you. mean that would probably mean that it's a remnant of a spell. Am I Don said the hill keep watch. So what are you what are you gonna identify first? I'll do the uh, take the time to identify the staff then. All if right. I use the. Uh, uh, from what you can tell from your identification spell, it is a staff of striking, but it seems to have something else attached to it. Though it, that's hard to tell what exactly it is. Only that there is some other spell snuck in underneath that. You can't quite read, at least not without identifying. You might have to identify it further in order to get that information. Oh, great. It's a cursed item. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was using uh, the ritual identify, so that wouldn't that wouldn't show but the... How, how many things can you identify with the, the one ritual for ten minutes? Does it say? Just one. What, what? Only one item. Just Bottom, one yeah. item. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, okay, interesting. So, 
And what was it that we identified that I identified on the uh, staff? Then it was. It's a staff of striking with something extra. Staff of striking. Yeah. So like with, I will... with basically another spell that uh, laced onto it that would make it more um, like it has nothing to do with the actual striking capabilities. It's its own separate thing. Hence, cursed. <laughs> <laughs> And it functions perfectly as a staff of striking, but there's something else wrong with it. Gotcha. Well, Holy. I will relay that information to Run and the rest of the group. <laughs> ah, well, uh, at least we have a uh, um, cleric here, just in case. And Run will actually just um, Pull out this a uh, this uh, black cloth and unfold it onto the floor to stick the staff in as it vanishes. And uh, and then uh um uh well if we get a chance to rest they may want to take a look through these books just to see what might be in them and uh run will stick well, the, the... well he is sitting you're sitting there for 10 minutes while he's casting that that, that uh, ritual identify oh. would you be looking at those books during those t 10 11 minutes um actually yes he would actually take a look at uh... okay uh one of them is a journal the other one is a spell book Ooh. <laughs> okay, so uh, Run will just thumb through the uh, spell book real quick just to see if there's any or what spells is in here. Hold on, let's see if I can get this for you. There you go. Just retreat. Identify illusionary script. Nice. Um. Arcane lock. Ooh, cloud of daggers. Nice. Um. And the fun part is, for the most part, Run can actually cast most of these, too. Well, magic is going to be useful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Run is an arcane trickster, so... And he's up to uh, third level spells now with, uh, or, wait a minute, no, I think it's only second level that he can. Yes, he can, he can. So he's not able to use the dispel magic or fireball just yet. Okay, so then he will also take a look at and he will look for the last entry in the journal. All right. So the last entry uh, mentions experiences in the tomb. And you can see some of the things that, like, you know, you ran into yourself on the, on the first floor. Uh, but... What's interesting is, is that you don't find any evidence of the staff that you guys found. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So, uh, I think within that, uh, 10 to 11 minutes, that would probably be about the only things that Run would have a chance to really look at. What about the rest of you? 
I'm I'm kind of, keep watch while he's doing his visual casting. Yeah, I'm keep, we have him surrounded. We're keeping um, keep an eye out for anything that might disrupt the ritual. All right. I'm just kind of playing a little tune. Now that the staff has been identified, what do you want to do next? Well, um, since Ron, well, uh, Ron, since you were uh, taking some time to take a look at the books, what did you, uh, what did you discover in them? Uh, well, uh, pretty much he was, or whoever this uh, wizard was, uh, and yes, he was definitely a wizard because uh, one of the books was a spell book. Ah. Um, uh, he was journaling what he was noticing, but uh, nothing about the uh, staff. Interesting. Since we now have well, this is kind of being an out of character thing, but since we now have dispel magic, maybe we can dispel this fucking hallway. <laughs> that would be a good thing. Unfortunately, um, again, <clears throat> not one of the spells I took this time around. Well, uh, I do have a question out of character for Grizz. Uh, the go for it. Uh, artificers are they able to learn wizard spells? Uh, does it say that in your in your book? I don't know. Does it, uh, Delta? Because as far as I know, I the, the, I. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Grace. It doesn't. I mean, there's certain things that allow you to pick them up. Like, there's the, uh, what is it, the Pact of the Tome for the Warlock, I think, does. But as far as I can tell, uh, Artificers can't just learn wizard spells. They'd have to, like, multi-class. Yeah, well, I actually right. have I, a multi-class have... Artificer Wizard, so... Yes, I am a multi-class okay, then, then Artificer you can learn, and Wizard. Then you can learn your <laughs> wizard spells, then, if that's the case. I thought you were talking about like as being a full w wizard here. I mean, full artificer here. Ugh, brain. <laughs> well, I didn't know he was a multi-class either way, so. Yeah, so um, since I do have wizardry and, and we, we have a spell book from a wizard, I could um, pick up some of those if if there's any that you're, you can't... Uh, can't get. You do apparently have magical ink. So you should be able to transcribe it into your spell book. Nice. So, yeah, which did, ones... did find an ink well on that body. Yep. Very true, very true. But, here's the question. How long does it take to transcribe the uh, spells into your spell book? Hours. Ooh. So It'll probably be a before we a, rest thing. Yeah, I need a long <laughs> rest for it. Yeah. Which we just took so we can't take another one. Yeah, not for a while. So, yeah, so yeah. that's pretty much why... Uh... Some of that run wouldn't be able to learn right away anyways because of, of that fact. Uh, well, um... Want me to scout ahead, see what's in the uh, next or the room there with the coffin? Are you going to do it with your with you or the bat? Uh, uh, well, of course, I would send Floof in. All right, hop on my back. Uh, Although, then again, uh, I, I if there's any magic aura that in there, uh, I wouldn't be able to see it through Blue's eyes. So there is that. That is a good point. Maybe you, could uh, get, maybe you could get close enough to the room that you could see if there was anything immediate in there while still keeping a distance. Uh, yeah, I could probably get to uh, the uh, right to the threshold there, and uh, while Floof is on the inside there, 
So I guess I will have floof. It, wait, before he takes off, Asteria is just going to walk up and run shoulder and just be like, careful, got this. Break inspiration for whatever the fuck you might need it for. That's a D8. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you giving the uh, inspiration to? You. Me? Okay. All right. Just in case there's any possible saving throws or things you may have to make. <laughs> okay, yeah. so... So, I will uh, grasp to... grasp onto whoever and uh, hopefully they will be sneaky enough to make it to this point right here while I have blue fly into the uh room okay. and let let me roll perception who do you uh, <clears throat> so who do you want to carry if you're trying to sneak what did you get for perception um that would be an 11 okay so, uh, so, so the description of the room uh, you see a checkered board marbled floor with a gilded coffin that it seems to be sparkling in sunlight streaming down from the chamber's vaulted ceiling, sitting in the middle of it. There's twelve there's arches twelve feet ahead uh, over twelve feet overhead. Four huge stone gargoyle heads, their mouths agape, protrude from the walls. All right, so, uh, so, uh, Dovit, are you, so what was it that you said that you, or, or what was it that you asked, Dovit? I had asked, uh, who do you want to carry if you're wanting just to be sneaky? I should be able to. All right, you're done. Smoke. All right, well, uh, I would probably be able to just switch back to my own vision after uh, after relaying what I what runs seen through Floof, which would probably be a little bit more intelligent on his part. So that way he can keep an eye out for traps or, uh, you know, any magic that may come up. So, uh, well, um, I think it would probably be best if uh, everyone stays behind me and uh, I can keep an eye out for things as we move up because I've already seen the uh, physical stuff that is in the... Uh, chamber, but not any magic, so. Other than the, uh, the transmutation spell that's in the corridor there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Be good or bad? Yeah, I'm still <laughs> wary of going down the corridor. <laughs> okay. Insane, well, but... Yeah, well, uh... Of course, Run needs to make sure of... It's always good to know that uh, where the enemies that are behind you are. So, he's going to use stealth, which would be... What'd you roll? Uh, that's what I was calculating. So, that's a 17 on the roll, plus 12. Uh, how about you give me the total and not this, like, the number rolled on there? That would be much easier uh, on me. Uh, no, that, that's, that's what I was doing, was calculating it myself. Uh, so that's 7, 8, 9, 29. All right, and he's also going to be investigating while he does. 
investigating? And that is a yes. And uh, because he's be trying to be so stealthy, his investigation is a fifteen. All right. Also have carefully uh, as you walk. Don't find any. Just no pressure. It's nothing. And you didn't see. Look, looking at the uh, the floor, the walls, the ceiling. You don't see any more magic besides the uh, the north south, uh, whatever that corridor is there, the one that curves upward on both sides. Okay. So, do I see any magic in the chamber now, since I am at the threshold? All right. As you walk towards the chamber, you look around. Let's see what, how far you can see from here. Let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's anything in here. Let's see. Just a little bit of observation magic around the uh, the coffin in front of you. Observation or divination magic? Objuration magic. Oh, abjuration. There's also, of course, uh, an illusion of sunlight above. That's just, like, you know, a standard illusion spell. Ah, uh, well, ah. Uh... I guess whoever this was was a uh, very highly thought of. Um, uh, it's safe. He calls back to the group. Daria will make her way forward, hoping nothing happens when she walks through the transportation shit. When her start to go, I'll just like ah, uh, and <laughs> like start to try to stop her, but then just keep following. All right. It's almost as chaotic as run, so she's hoping nothing happens, but she's like, eh, if something happens, it happens. <laughs> and run will uh, tentatively step into the chamber, testing to see if there's any... I well, we still don't see any traps along the floor. You're still on that, that investigation that you rolled earlier. Okay. So. What about the rest of you? Are you guys staying over there, or are you guys approaching the cor the the, uh, the chamber? I'm gonna stay back and just cover, uh, okay. make sure nothing sneaks up on us, as well as just to be careful of the transmutation spell. Okay. Doesn't seem to be affecting any of your party members thus thus far. So far. <laughs> That's, That's the key far, word. Yeah. So far. <laughs> Let's see. Run's the only one we that's could... inside the chamber. But what... So we could touch something in here and it triggers something, so <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> right, exactly. All right. So, uh, uh, well, um, I, I could check to see what these gargoyles do. If there's, uh... Yeah, so see. I'm going to That's what these, by that... the way, all are. Oh, hold yes. on. Yeah, you can uh, see that the so... gargoyle heads are five mm -hmm. feet tall and five feet wide. And the mouths are two feet in diameter. Alright, does he see any magic within the map? Uh, no, actually. Uh, and with your investigation check that's still going, uh, you do notice there are valves inside those mouths. Yup. Uh, you have to be close to one of them. You can't just be standing up in the middle of oh, things yeah, and of seeing course. that. <laughs> well, I, as I said, I was going to be investigating the, uh, yeah. So what about the rest of you? Are you just going to be standing there and letting Run do everything? As far as Asteria is aware, he's just a scout. He does this all the time, so she's just letting him do his shit. She's following behind. Whenever he says it's clear. Yes, pretty much. It's like, 
listening for any danger or his call for aid. Okay, so um, as he's checking these, uh, you said that there's valves? There's a valve inside the, the mouth that you're looking into. Does, that, does my danger sense detect anything? No. You're not in any position to sense anything. Run will, um, uh, well, um, uh, y'all go ahead and, uh, stay back and, um, uh, Bloof, if you will, uh, could you, uh, and he will, uh, <clears throat> vanish back into his little rift. And uh, Run will back away a little past the thing here. And uh, this time, there is no stopping it. He will cast Mei-Chan. Uh, let's see what happens on the chaos roll. That would be a 36. Magic thirty six. Uh, roll a d ten. Oh boy, <laughs> that's a two. All right, you are two years older. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> he's still a teenager in gnome years. Yeah, he's a gnome, so that doesn't do anything to really. <laughs> hey, that's a really good result, though. What, what, are you gonna do? What, what are you gonna do with the with the mage hand? Uh, the mage hand is going to uh, reach into and uh, into the mouth and uh, see what the valve does. It it is too too tightly closed for a mage hand to activate. It's like you try yanking on it and it doesn't budge. Uh, I don't even think that Run uh, could do it with his own strength. <laughs> little one, I took an exploding door for you. Do you need me to help you with this? Uh, I, hey, actually, as long as it is tight, um, I think it would probably be best for the time being that we don't test fate too much. It's like a turn valve, not like a... Turn valve, a yeah. Okay. All right. So, Run will recall the May Chan back to him, but he will not dispel it. But he will come to investigate the coffin. All right. Uh, there is some kind of abjuration magic on the coffin. It seems to be stuck firmly to the floor and has a hinged lid. Okay, any writing or... Not on the outside of the coffin, no. Okay, so... Can't tell who it is. <laughs> um... Well, uh, we could either, uh, I, I, well, um, I, I, I think it's safe to say that, uh, this room is safe. Uh, we could, uh, continue on or we can, uh, see what's in the coffin here. However, I think it is protected by a magic. I vote for seeing what's inside the coffin. I've been in here for a long time, and I haven't seen too many interesting things. Usually only bad things. So this could be something cool. I'll move forward a little bit, but still stay out of the range of the uh, transmutation uh, orb spell. I'm going to walk on in. Stand the uh, opposite to a stereo on the, on the side of the coffin. 
Do you need me to help open it, little one? Where are you going to be standing? I need I need to see where you're going because your your token is still there. Hello? Who who were you talking to? Uh whoever said they were moving in and they hadn't moved their token. Heard on. Alright. Little one, do you need my help to open this? Three in, three uh, out. Uh well, um if, if we do decide to open this thing, um Uh, we might need you, uh, but, uh, uh, well, uh, like I said, this uh, casket is protected by a spell. Uh, abjuration has a tendency to pack a wallop in some cases. Does anybody have the spell? The spell. Uh... I have our spell, but not this spell. Uh, well, uh, well, I do have to ask uh, the question: uh, Do we really want to dispel? Because uh, there's, I mean, uh, well, there's no telling what inside the uh, coffin. Doe looks back at Michael. Are you okay back there, friend? So far, everything is good back here. I don't see uh, anything trying to sneak up on us. Uh, should I do an investigation check just to be safe, Grizz? Or, sure. Uh... Uh, don't stay too far away from us. We don't know what could happen in this tomb. Yes, yes, I will not. I'll stay right here. I just... We still don't know what that transmutation spell is going to do, and one of us has to at least not pass through it, just in case, just to be safe. All right, so uh, Run will turn to Torin. Uh, you have some of your... Uh, I, I, I know that you are grieving, my friend, and... As much as I am grieving as well, you have to be sure of what we are getting into. And, uh, I, I do need your counsel here. What are you trying to decide? Uh, should we open the casket just to make sure of whatever is in there is going to stay in there? And possibly to see if there's anything that will be useful for us in the uh, future to come. Earlier, I stopped the stairs. Yep. Steady, I used the ward on us. Michael, by the way, I was, you said you were going to roll investigation watching the, the area. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, I was asking you looking if up you in this direction. Like to do that. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I was wait I, I was waiting for that roll. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was asking if I should do that or not. And yeah, I, I asked you. I, I asked you to. Oh, I guess you're. I didn't hear you. Your mic cuts out sometimes, and we don't hear you even whenever you're not muted. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Michael, you're looking this way. Like, yeah, you, you don't hear anything. You look around the floor. You don't see any evidence of traps. It's pretty much like you know, stone f floor. Uh, occasional little weird fleck of red. Maybe it's old blood or something. Uh, 
Not much else interesting looking in that direction and investigating the area. Okay, good. <laughs> I would like to remind you guys that, um, yeah, Dovit, Erdon, and Torin are the only ones that have the Death Ward. So if one of them opens it, then he shouldn't be able to easily die. <laughs> Then let me open it. Hold up. Ron, have you checked out this thing yet? Ah. Well, from what I've seen, there's no traps on it. There is uh, a spell of abjuration of some sort on the coffin itself. And the only other spell that is active is the illusionary sun above us. Now, uh, without being able to identify the uh, current spell that is on the uh, casket, uh, there's no telling what the abjuration can do to us if we go to open it. It could be just a simple, uh, like a, a, a anti magic or uh, it could be a shield of some sort to keep the uh, uh, you know the casket from being damaged, or it could be like a uh, like a uh, uh, a uh, like a uh, uh, like a arcane cage as well. I, um, I looked something up, and abjuration could also be a dispel magic. Wanted to figure out if that was a transmutation thing or an abjuration thing, and it's an abjuration, so if we open this, and it could possibly dispel things. Not saying that that's what it's going to do, but it could. Every, then, but everyone should back off and let me open it. I am very haughty. I can take just about anything that's thinking and thought to me, and I have that uh, bill that Asteria gave me. Hey, back, all bronze, no brains. Are you going to uh, step uh, into the room then? Mean. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to roll Arcana just to see if I might accidentally identify the okay. spell, though. Go for it. All right. So, and that is a okay. And Arcana is eight, so that's a nineteen. It feels like the sort of magic that might protect the coffin in some way. Like, you know, keep it from being damaged, perhaps? So, kind of like a shield. Possibly. Uh, now, uh, uh, from what I can get, uh, from what I can tell from what I can see, uh, Dovid, uh, try not to damage the casket itself. Uh, uh, let me check for something real quick. And he is going to try to look for possibly any latches or uh, locks. In what? On the casket. It's. I've already mentioned, it's got a hinged lid. It's not locked. Okay. Stary is just going to walk out of the room but like stay in the doorway in case they need any spells uh, or assistance or anything. Run, are you want to open this thing with the spell on it or spell? Uh, well, uh, from what I can tell, the uh, spell itself is to keep the uh, the casket itself from being damaged, possibly. So I don't think just 
opening it will uh, uh, do too much. As long as we don't try to, say, blow up the place. <coughs> and and at, with that said, Run will stick his hands in his pocket. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll just play this safe. Uh, so... That this is why I would right. I asked for your the observation magic friend. magic uh, on the, the casket itself goes away. And uh, Dova's going to open the coffin. You have okay. The spell pen, so, so Dova looks down at the at the coffin as it opens, and this is what happens first. Uh, as he's looking down, the sun from above shines down upon a wooden plaque inside, reading, Drown Your Sorrows. Meanwhile, Asteria, there is suddenly a loud noise above you as the, uh, uh, as the stone above your head starts to slam down towards the ground. Give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, gosh. I had a feeling something okay. was going to happen. You oh, just spelled geez. the wrong Boy. thing, guys. <laughs> well, that would be a this 20... This is an insidious trap. I love it. Uh, 27. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, Erdan's directly behind you, so you can only roll forward as the block <laughs> slams down. <laughs> oh! Tra trapping it. The, the four of you in this room trapping the other two on the outside of the room. You hear as this is happening, as the thing slams into the ground, the sound of valves suddenly springing open and wine starts to cascade out of each one of the mouths, starting to oh, fill. Gosh. <laughs> gosh. Starting... <laughs> starting to fill the room. And that is where we'll pick up next time. <laughs> of course. I have, I have <laughs> such an idea now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had, the, I had a feeling it was going to be a good idea to just stay over here on this side, where it's you know, might be where I maybe could do something in case something crazy happens, whether the transmutations start to change people, and I could 